I've been creating content for a number of years and a lot of people reach out to me looking for tips and tricks on certifications and asking me about cloud roles and tips and tricks for interviewing. But I thought in this video, it would be really cool if I did a video on a week in the life of an AWS solutions architect. And that AWS solutions architect in this case is going to be me. Now I've seen a lot of videos that do like a day in the life of an AWS solutions architect. But I'm like, you know what, that is so condensed and what you do from day to day can kind of vary. So I thought about, let me take like a week in my life as an AWS solutions architect and really look at where I am in the year at the top of the year here and kind of just show you what I'm up to because these are some insights that are not going to be in your AWS certification curriculum. After all, once you pass your certifications, at some point, I can imagine, you want to jump into a particular role. So it would be helpful to know what is it actually like to do it. If you're new here, I'm Greg, creator of Thoughtful Techie Cloud YouTube channel. And I am an AWS solutions architect at AWS and I've been there for over seven and a half years. I could spend a lifetime sharing tips and tricks and all sorts of insights with you, but I'll spare you every single detail and just try to highlight some of the key insights that I've learned over the years in this video. If you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe below. I'm creating videos on a weekly basis to share my AWS cloud insights and best practices with you. All right, so we begin with my work schedule. It's Monday through Friday, but a successful week doesn't start on Monday. It actually starts with Sunday. One of the first thing I try to do is on Sunday is go to bed early. Now, I don't always do this, but I am really trying to stick to a really good pattern on this. And I'm trying to get between seven to eight hours of sleep is what I'm currently trying to do. Because a lot of times I try to sacrifice sleep with trying to get ahead. And usually it comes back to bite me because sleep deprivation is not a good thing. So I shoot for my eight hours of sleep on a nightly basis and I shoot for that from Sunday through Thursday. Because guess what? Friday and Saturday, those nights and days after are on my own time. So hey, you can stay up late and recover later. Now leading into Monday, I wake up and hopefully I wake up refreshed. I always like to jump in the shower, take a fresh, hot, crispy shower in the morning, even if I'm not going to be meeting with customers directly or traveling, I like to be fresh. I like to dress sharp, I like to spray on my cologne and uh, look and feel my best so I can uh, exert my best energy and my best effort on the job. Now, I don't know about you, but I like to eat. So I am not skipping any breakfast. I am making sure that I'm eating a balanced breakfast. Typically what I'll do is I'll have like some eggs and some sort of fruit or avocado to start my day. Right now I'm doing this whole low glycemic kind of keto friendly type of diet. And I do also a little bit of intermittent fasting. So my feeding window is between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. every day. So I pack in at least three different meals within that time frame that are keto friendly or either low glycemic. And then at 5 p.m., that's no food all the way into the next day. And I find for me, that really keeps my mood stabilized, keeps me satiated, and I feel like I'm getting the proper nutrition that I'm supposed to get. Now, what does eating right and nutrition have to do with anything? Well, because this is a intellectual type job, you need to be able to get your rest and eat properly so that you can think and put out your best work. Now on Mondays, in terms of customer meetings, unless it's absolutely necessary, I typically like to push those Monday meetings a little bit later into the morning, because remember, we're just shifting back from the weekend, so we're starting our Monday, so when you get into the office, it's good to kind of, you know, look at the day ahead, look at the week ahead, to get your bearings to figure out, okay, what is it we wanna accomplish not only today, but this week. And if we start with an 8 a.m. meeting on a Monday, for example, that kind of cuts into that time where you can look at your strategy and your operations for that week. 
So I tend to, uh, when possible, push some of those customer facing meetings back just a little bit later into that Monday morning. Once I've looked at that week from a holistic perspective, now it's time to start jumping on those customer calls. Now ideally, before you jump on those customer calls, you have looked at those customer calls at least 48 hours in advance, preferably a week in advance if you can. So you can make sure to figure out what is the scope of that call, what is the agenda, are you prepared to deliver on everything you need to deliver on, do you need to bring another key point of contact into the call to help support it to make sure you have the proper coverage on that customer call. Now on customer calls, what I like to do is I like to schedule a call, right? And then leave a little bit of a gap in between one customer call and another. Because at the conclusion of every call, remember during that call, you have typed notes and there's gonna be action items and follow-ups at the end of that. Now some of those are gonna be yours, like a follow-up email, for example. Maybe you need to reach out to somebody based on the follow-up on that customer call to be able to push an opportunity forward. So by spacing out your customer calls from one between the next, let's say you allow like 15 minutes in between the calls, you can do those closeout items to properly close out that call so you don't have a lot of items stacking up. Now after you've taken your morning set of meetings, now we're gonna make it towards lunch, right? I believe in having lunch. I do not schedule meetings during lunch hour unless it's an absolute emergency because guess what? If you're skipping lunch and you're hungry and you're not getting your nourishment, chances are you're not setting yourself up for success. So you better believe I'm having my lunch during lunchtime. Now after lunch, a couple of different things can happen. You may have additional customer meetings, so you'll execute those just like you did the ones in the morning. However, if your meetings have concluded for the day, this is a great time for what I call builder time. Now let me back up a little bit of a second because let me give you the general framework for how you allocate your time as an AWS Solution Architect. About 50% of your time is spent in front of customers. Now I've indicated that through some of the customer meetings. Now 35% of your time is preparing for those customer meetings. So that could be directly preparing for those customer meetings, reviewing the agenda, making sure you're ready and sharp. Beyond that, it's professional development. So maybe you're working on renewing a certification or maybe you're rev reviewing a technical document or maybe you are building a hands-on lab. These are all in-demand skills that are gonna help you be a better AWS Solutions Architect so that when you jump on those calls, they're very productive and your ability to earn trust through your demonstrating your technical credibility with the customer is very high. So I highly encourage you when all your meetings are over for that day, fill that space in with that professional development time, which I called builder time. Once you've addressed that 50% in front of customers, that 35% of professional development, that leaves you with about 15% of time. These are admin type tasks. So this is reporting looking at across trends, these business level operational things in terms of that territory that you are managing. And it could be things like manage business reviews and writing up various narratives to bubble up insights that you're having within your patch up to leadership. Now, another unique thing as an AWS Solutions Architect is you're gonna be paired with an account manager. An account manager is somebody with a very deep sales background, sometimes called a sales rep, and you will partner with them to work with your customers. So you will be the technical point of contact in the account, and your account manager will be the sales rep or manage the business relationship between the customer and AWS. And it's very important as you are aligned with your account manager that you set up one-on-one -on -one meetings on a weekly basis. I meet with my account manager at the beginning of the week and we take a look at all the customer meetings we have that week, anything that's outstanding from the former week, anything that might be stalled that we might need to push along and just kind of look at the week from a holistic perspective to make sure that we are progressing along and we're meeting all the expectations 
of our customers. Now keep in mind, we are navigating around all the customer commitments that we have. We're squeezing in this one-on-one -on -one with the account manager. And remember, you are also a part of a broader AWS Solution Architect team. So you're meeting with your Solution Architecture team each week as well. And in this meeting, you could not only talk about things you've learned, but you share your knowledge with the other Solution Architect members on your team. Now you're collectively learning all the trends and insights across your team. And this makes you to be able to be a better Solution Architect for your customers. Another great aspect of being an AWS Solution Architect through the week is that you get to work on things regarding thought leadership. Thought leadership could be writing a blog, it could be public speaking, it could be participating and preparing for some sort of trade show like an AWS Summit or AWS reInvent, for example. I'm very fortunate that I get to work very closely with AWS training and certification, specifically on their live streams, on their AWS training live Twitch channel. So I participated a lot within the past year and I'm looking forward to participating in that program going forward in this year as well. I'm also newly involved with participating in the curriculum development for the AWS Cloud Clubs team, which is really awesome. Cloud Clubs are designed for students and helping students to ramp up and learn AWS. And that's definitely an exciting project that I look forward to. Now, these first type of customer meetings that I talked about were phone meetings. So we log into a video conferencing type software and we talk with our customers directly on that. But you will be traveling sometimes as well to visit customers. And sometimes you will travel for internal events as well. In a couple of weeks, I'm going to be traveling to New York, which I'm looking forward to, to meet my expanded team out there in the New York office. One of the things I'm working on now is booking the travel for that. So that'll be a flight, hotel, figuring out how to get to and from the office. And I'm really looking forward to that. And then one thing I almost missed that's very important to me is sometime in the afternoon, whether it's during that lunch hour or at the conclusion of the day, I like to get some fresh air. So I'll just go for like a short walk on the outside to get some fresh air during that lunchtime. Or at the end of the day, when it's over, I like to either go for a hike, go to the gym, get in a quick jog, just to burn off some stress, get the blood flowing, get those endorphins going, and prepare for having a great day the next day by getting that quick workout in, then having some relaxation time in the evening, and then getting in the bed by around 10 o'clock or so, so I can get that between seven to eight hours of sleep. So yeah, that was just some quick highlights of how my weeks are going. Nothing too exotic and crazy, but I tell you what, I love it and wouldn't trade it for anything else in the world. As always, if you have any comments or any questions, make sure you put those down below. And before you go, make sure you check out this next video.